you allow me to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Remove Before Race and this is a new segment that we're starting which is behind the scenes vlogs of what we get up to while we're picking up some of the test cars that we get and all the other automotive stuff that we get up to and maybe a bit of coffee and, and uh, comedy as well. But today we're picking up our long-term test car for February and we thought it'd be our oh, Chewie's here hang on. let's just let him in so we thought it'd be quite nice to show you guys this particular pickup because it's something that's quite out of our comfort zone but something that you guys are going to be really interested in when we come to the big full review so we'll show you the pickup a bit of initial impressions when we first see the car and uh, let's see what we think of this one it's going to be an interesting one there's Chewie and his we, we're not sure what we call this car in the end. Was it the Black Falcon or the Star Destroyer? To be something Star Wars related. The Blackbeard. Blackbeard? The Blackbeard? Oh, Talk about your car name. It's called the Dark Falcon. I thought it was Black Falcon. All right, I'm jumping in. All right. Where are we going? <sighs> well, I need to acquire the ability to string sentences together. So, uh... Say no more. I know those words. Yep. Let's get some The coffee. most important part of the day. Coffee first. Do Wookiees drink? Is that blue milk that Luke was chugging down off a tit of an alien? Remembering the last Jedi. Look, whatever Luke does in his own spare time, I've got nothing to do with it. You might realise I've disassociated both of and myself from you. Feel better now. Got you one as well. Is that the gratitude I get? What is that? Hmm? What is it? It's flat white. You have told you I don't like coffee. You will drink the coffee. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, no offense to any coffee lovers. I, I do like coffee, but I don't know. I'm more of a tea person. I don't know why. Okay. I'm not quite there yet. I need to get to like half the cup. You can start that. Now that you come to like philosophical argument. Like, watch me use the force. Teas and coffee. Watch me use the force reverse in this car. Well, keys can't use the force. <laughs> Listen, I've got a hood on, yeah? I've got a Jedi jacket on, yeah? Actually, I suppose Wookiees could use the force, theoretically. Anyone could. Yeah, look, I've got my Jedi look. Shit, I was just Wookieist. Is that a thing? AMG Being... Jedi look. Being Wookieist? Like a... The racist against Wookiees. Right, so how about a bit of car and coffee talk while we are on the way? Today is February 1st, and tomorrow Mercedes are unveiling the new A Class. You got high hopes? It's a drastic change. It's a big change. I mean, we had a big change from the original A Class to the current one anyway. Now, this one is like next level to that because you've it almost looks like, I know it's hard to tell from pictures, but it looks like you're getting like an E-Class level interior in a, in a small, compact, you know, A-Class 1 series level car. It's the fact that you've actually got, well, I suppose most people describe it as a massive iPad code across the yeah. dash. Yeah. But you can do anything with it. Yeah. And now they've added that new system where you can talk to Mercedes, kind of like you do with um, so, hey, your Siri. iPhone. You know, we say, hey Siri. So the AMG is coming in the A-Class series, there's actually two. So currently we've only got the A45. What they're doing in the next generation is a lower level A35. Yeah, which is, I don't know, going to be about 350 brake. 
So kind of think of it like what the C43s are to the C63. Then replacing the A45 is going to be the A50. That's going to be a Formatic Plus. I've heard it's going to be like 450 brake, maybe, which is much as the current C63 standard one. It's nearly as powerful as my Turan. Almost as powerful as. Right, your right, Turan. Right. Listen, I promise. I thought we got over the, the Turan now. You're in a GLS. Look, I just, I don't know, there's something about using that name. It's just like, it's like, I don't know, for you and Michael Kubler, it's like kryptonite. They're mentioning that word, VW Turan. All of a sudden, just sets you off. It's just the worst possible car in the world. You even had our sales manager at Hughes in it the other day, and he tried to hang himself with his own tie within the car. No, no. We, it was almost a, a national incident here in, in the town. Listen, we covered that. He was hanging himself because of all these years of driving Mercedes, he got in that car and he just felt that awesome. Speaking of hanging yourself, I'm about to pick up my first BMW M car this week. Bring on the haters. <laughs> it's the new BMW M4 CS. I'm going to be off to Park Lane uh, BMW to pick it up. You know what? We had an experience with the M2. M2 is phenomenal. As a driving car, I was... The right. only thing I had against it was the interior. I think we both did, didn't we? It's, it's that feeling, you get into an M2, and then you get into an M Sport. It's almost like you had the same interior, and you couldn't quite feel the difference. But in terms of like the driving, that's true. I mean, that's across the board with M cars. And they're not, they're not. Uh, the CS and the M4 GTS are probably the only ones that... You jump in and it's like, oh shit, this is actually a problem. You've got a bit more of a Yeah, you've got position. like, you know, Alcantara everywhere, and CS written here, and Alcantara on the steering wheel, etc. So you actually get that feeling. But And I think where the A45 let itself down on the facelift was the, the, the subpar exhaust system. If you look at the pre-facelift car, it pops and bangs and burbles like the C63 does. The one after the facelift just really odd exhaust system in that car. Do you, do you know what I always found surprising was with the A45? You talk about the exhaust. Why did you have an exhaust button on? It didn't seem to do anything, did it? Well, it did. The little light came on, didn't it? The light came on, yeah. That was about it. And then, apparently, you, the noise would increase as you push the car, but really, yeah. you, you'd have to, like, really just listen out for it, which was, it's, it's not the case with all the other exhaust so systems. You, you're passing it to go in the boot and put the head next to it. Yeah, yeah, literally. What do you think of the G-Wagon interior? I think it looks amazing. What I love is how they've made the vents at the, inside the car look like the headlights. Yeah. You know, the, the same uh, shape. That was a really smart touch. Because always the G-Wagon always looked like you were driving a Sprinter inside, and outside you had this lovely retro car. But the more one thing I'm curious about is the steering wheel. I always yeah. just found, I think when I first got in the G-Wagon, yeah, I always kept the old <laughs> steering wheel. <laughs> it wasn't that, it's when you're turning the corner, it's almost like you have to pull the wheel back a bit to get it sort of... Oh, you, you mean that thing where you turn the wheel and the car doesn't actually turn? <laughs> yeah, but the funny thing was, at first I found it worrying, but then I found it a nice quirky feel. Yeah, you, it's, you sort of... Um, it endears you to the car, doesn't it? It was that, and I think, what was the other thing? Haha, <laughs> hey, I'm going to kill myself, oh, this is so fun! What was the other thing? The doors. Make sure you close those doors. Yeah. And the flat windscreen. The doors I love. I love the kachunk and they've kept that in the new one as well. They have. Oh, yeah. that, that's that nice. sound and the locking system. We're going to be arriving here soon. Oh look, I can see Mercedes. Oh, here we are. <laughs> I'm Yay! I just saw the car. So we've arrived at Rigor Commercial Vans and... That guy just jumped out of the car and it's going backwards. No, it's me really forward. <laughs> I was thinking, why is that van moving over there? Why is that car moving? Oh shit, we're moving forward. And you know, I just thought I could We're driving into the, the building. Sorry, we've just <laughs> arrived at Rigor to pick up our Rigor near Heathrow Commercial Vans. It's an MB dealership and we almost drove into the building because... Chewy doesn't know how to use. You're in neutral, man. Uh, no, you're not. This that. is not a Turan, yeah. It doesn't. It's not so heavy that it just stays in place. You need to press the part. 
the sodding park. But you know the funny thing was, I just saw this guy like jump out of that van thinking to myself, why is he getting out of his car while he's moving backwards? <laughs> Sorry. Right, I have. think we should. I need to get in my own car now. It's because I had cost it. I just wasn't fully awake at the time. Right, guys, we're here at Rigo Commercial. Let's go and get the keys for this slightly quirky car we're picking up. Hey, How are you? Brilliant. Good. Show us this car. Let's do it. There is the new X Class. Right. So okay. Here we are. Yes. Inside, so it's as you'd expect. This is very Mercedes looking. Yeah. And as I say, it is based on the chassis is a Navara originally. And then as soon as you get in, you can see that it's been fully yep. Mercedes, if you like. Well, this is really modern. I mean, you've got the vents, which look like they've come straight out. Well, this is like A-class design. And then this wooded effect is quite nice as well. Yeah, that's, so that's a, that's an option. If you want it, you can have it. You've got um, you, most of the the vans are having the aluminium sort of grain yeah, yeah. trim, yeah. and you can have black as well. Um, this is quite premium looking. It's quite impressive. Yeah, you can also get like the brown leather to match yeah. it. You've got so, the command system. You've got yeah. touch pad. Yep. Yeah. Gear stick is older. Gear stick is is what it is. Unfortunately, I think anything down here yeah. is more. But sort I don't of, mind having. I mean. I know we're all having stalks these days in the in the Mercs, but it's quite nice to have a classic. I just prefer having gear sticks here. I don't know, maybe it's an old. It, the other an thing old, is, an old person. If you're going to go something. off road in it, yeah. you just stick it straight into drive. You've yeah. got all your kit down there, and you're away. Yeah. You know, there's no no messing around. So, what does the key look like? Here you are. Well, there's the key. <laughs> this is distinctly Nissan, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, there will be a few bits that. Are, it's that odd. Are I mean, is is like having a key? Isn't that an easy thing to do? Surely for. Well, I suppose it's all design and engineering and yeah. whatnot. Um, and it's where do you stop, you know? That's true. Because you could keep going and keep going and but keep going. But it's all going. keyless then, isn't it? So yes, in this one particularly it is keyless. So you've got the normal, oh that's like a proper merch start button as well, isn't it? Yeah. What about the engine? Where does that, where does that originate from? So this engine at the moment originally was Nissan. Okay. Um, this is the 250 in this one. You've also yeah. got the 220, also Nissan originally. Yeah. Um, being fully changed over by Mercedes now. Okay, so, so it's actually engineers. been sort of modified by Mercedes. Correct, well. yeah, right. exactly. Okay. Um, they've changed pretty much everything on, on the, uh, the vehicle. Yeah. Um, and then also what's coming, um, probably towards the end of the year, is the uh, three litre V6. Which, which is the V6 coming then? Yes. Okay. So and that'll, that'll be, be what, like a 350 defense. or something? Correct, yeah. Right, okay. It'll be just like a GLE, to be honest with you, yeah. engine-wise. Yeah. And what, what else is there, like, can you switch between driving in terms of the four-wheel drive, and is there a... Yeah, so you've got your four-wheel drive options down here. Right, um, oh, I see it, yeah. yeah. Two-wheel so, drive. Correct, and then you can change it from uh, to four-wheel drive, and you can put it into high or low ratio, depending gotcha. on what terrain you're on. Yeah. You've also got your uh, downhill speed regulator as well, yeah. which is pretty standard in most sort of off-road vehicles. Yeah. Um, so in terms of its capability when you're going off-road, absolutely fully capable. Well, I might have to test that. Yeah. I might have to test that. I see you've also got 360 cam. Yep. Which is brilliant. Yeah. Again, handy on the four-wheel four drive. I when can't, you can't imagine a lot of pickups are going to have that. Do you know you'd be surprised? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are asking for it, to be honest with you, because it comes as a pack anyway. Yeah. Um, it's so going to be supremely useful, because it's quite a large car in terms of its dimensions. So basically, it? reverse camera is standard on all of them, no matter right. what you get. Okay. And then you can get the 360 camera, which, like yep. I say, some of the guys are, are upgrading to. That's brilliant. And then you've also got lane assist. Yep. That's in there, and you've also got brake assist as standard as well. So all of those Mercedes safety functions. That's you've amazing. Got on this. So coming out of like a normal Merc, you're not going to feel too out of place. I mean, you were saying when we spoke earlier uh, in the week that <coughs> the customers who are coming to get these cars tend to own pretty high-end yeah, cars beforehand we've anyway. Been, we've been speaking to a lot of business owners and people like that who yeah. have already got E63, C63s, yeah. um, and want something else. Good you know, taste. want something to, yeah, exactly. They're fully, they're fully immersed in the brand yeah. and, and they want to keep it. So this um, is going to be like their third or fourth car or something yeah, that yeah. they're going to use as a workhorse just to stay within the brand, I guess. Yeah, exactly. But this is really, if you want a luxury pickup, I suppose it's the only, it's the only option. One. Definitely. There's, if, in terms of luxury pickup, there is no other real option. 
Well, it's going to be really exciting to try this out. I can't see. I uh, can't wait to see what you come up with. Yeah, I'm sure we'll come up with something entertaining. <laughs> what do you reckon, Bill? This chair's pretty high up in the back. This was actually he. He wanted one of these before he got his GLS, but they couldn't come fast enough because they're sort of delivering mid to end of this yeah, year, yeah, yeah. aren't they? That's it. Yeah. This is going to be interesting for you. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised. You know, the back seat. I'm is it comfortable? Quite, I'm like I'm nearly six foot tall, and I'm quite comfortable in the back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm six two. I squeeze in there, no drama. I'm actually quite Impressive. surprised to answer you. Right, well thank you John for your time. Thank you, enjoy it. We're going to give a few first impressions of this car now. Right, so what do you think, first impressions? What are you expecting? First impressions, um, to be honest with you, this seems quite luxurious. For it's a really MB looking, isn't it? Pickup truck, it is very MB. I mean, I just look at those vents that remind me of the A-Class. They look brilliant and I don't want to diss the new S class, but sitting in the facelift that that we just got and seeing the old vents, this looks more premium than that, just having the different ones, doesn't it? It so does. It's like distinctly MB. It does. Do you know the gear stick in the middle, which yeah. is like going back? Yeah. Now, I suppose you could almost say um, why there, but then also if you bear in mind where you're going to take this vehicle off road, yeah. you don't want to be hitting the gear stick accidentally. I was surprised to find the lane assist in here and the 360 cam. Well, those are really like luxury options for a car, um, aren't they? That 360 is the same one I have. It's the same as the. Um, well, there you go, right there. Exactly the same as your GLS. Which is brilliant. That means you can see all the wheels. And you can actually see the wheels. I think the dials are all the same as your GLE as well. So it's the steering wheel. Steering wheel's like wheel the same. Yeah. You obviously got the touchpad and stuff from the C class and the E. Yeah, I feel as an MB owner, I feel pretty at home in this. And no electronic brake. Yeah, manual handbrake. Good old handbrake. I can see us doing some two wheel drive stuff on the Brooklyn skid pan in this. I have no idea what you're talking about. We'll have to call the drift god. Right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that first look. It's just a bit of a teaser for you guys. We don't want to go too in depth because there's going to be a full review that we're going to do on this car. Um, how does it differentiate from its uh, donor, Navara, if you like, um, how Mercedes-Benz is this car in reality? And then after that, we're going to do, having, having a month to live with this, we'll tell you what it's like to live with a month down the line as well. And there might be some more interesting stuff. For that, we'll have to stay tuned to what we get up to. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for more vlogs and behind-the-scenes stuff of this nature and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks.